Howdy and welcome to today's KSP2 video, where I want to take you on an adventure in an experimental space plane. Yes, I was gonna build a dream chaser, but after miserably failing on my X37 project, and later on being unable to produce a functional dream chaser craft, I've decided I need to take initiative and design my own spacecraft. It being experimental pretty much means it could possibly glide better, but considering how unpredictable this game can be, I'm very happy that it even works, but more on that later. Currently though, we seem to be on our way to orbit and we're apparently going too fast, hence the heating. I also have no idea why the entire stack just did a backflip there. My test flight prior to filming was perfect, but this time that happened and the rocket was even harder to control during the ascent. Despite initial issues, the mission is going as planned and the first stage has been discarded along with the fairing, giving you the very first look at the cargo. I have to admit that this is certainly a weird design, with our lander being also a translunar stage, and yes, we're gonna land on the moon. <laughs> it would be entirely possible to switch roles and land the plane on the moon instead of the lander, but only the plane is rated for re-entry and has means of slowing down in the atmosphere. At this point in the mission, we've already established an orbit, deployed solar panels, and turned off control surfaces, and we can finally start flying the translunar injection burn and since we are more than great fuel-wise, I don't have to bother with any means of conserving fuel, but we still managed to get a very decent maneuver window. Let's just time warp around and start the burn, keeping a close eye on the space map. I am actually quite happy with the maneuver node, as we nearly even got a free return trajectory, but given it is just a game and not a real-life mission, it was entirely optional to have been able to return with no fuel expense. The first engine burn is done, we just need to correct the tilt by dragging the node in an anti-normal direction. Such a maneuver is expensive to perform close to the celestial body, but very cheap further away, therefore connection burns are usually performed later on in the mission. Now that we have the maneuvering out of the way, let's head on towards the destination. Let me know what your thoughts are on this particular build, cause personally I quite like the idea and the plane, and at the same time it feels like it lacks some key features, but it may just be my imagination. Look at the lovely shot of the moon as we approach it, but I don't like the cam camera switching perspectives on its own. I think it takes away from how cinematic this game can sometimes be. And now that we enter the sphere of influence of the moon, we can plan our circularization burn. And I kinda wanted to make it low enough so that we don't have to put in a lot of fuel on the ascent and descent or i guess the other way around <laughs> now we just have to burn retrograde slow ourselves down and i'm actually gonna slow ourselves slow myself a little bit too much so we can discard the lower stage and just leave the lander and the plane attached together and the lower stage will just crash into the moon as we safely burn prograde and I guess a little bit up. <laughs> I am not sure what my thought process was. I think I was trying to raise my uh, periapsis. But now we are on the sunny or the day side of the moon. We can check the fuel and the crew. And this is the realization that almost kicked in. <laughs> that I made a mistake. You're gonna see later on what I mean. I'm not gonna spoil anything now. So let's just detach the lander with two of the crewmates on board and make our way down to the surface. I do not like how the attachment ring or whatever you want to call it, the adapter, stayed in space. It was quickly cleaned up by the engines. <laughs> now the orbit burn is done and with the high thrust of the puddle engine, I think that's what it's called, we can safely and quickly land. And as you see, I only have three landing legs and that is going to be detrimental to this mission. As you're gonna see just now, as I'm trying to hop my way through the surface. It's actually gonna be three different hops. I'm trying to land somewhat stable and not damage my solar panels. Which, for some reason, I can't even uh, hide or do anything with them. They have to stay deployed. At last, I settled for a slim-like landing, kind of. Just with the engine bells pointing to the side, not up. <laughs> well, I figure let's just dismount, do some screenshots, some picture time, 
conduct experiments, observations, surf, surface survey or surface sample, whatever it's called now. I'm actually having trouble typing in uh, the proper title of the lower and uppercase letters. I know the typing was a glitch like almost a year ago when the game launched and then it went away and then it reappeared, it seems. And I'm not sure what just happened there with one of the Kerbals trying to uh, hump the rock, I guess. Anyway, it seems to be the time to board the ship and try to actually launch it without crashing into anything or losing vital parts of the craft. But as you can see, the first try did not go so well. So on the second one, I decided to spin it around, kind of wiggle it a bit and try going up. And now it's just burning 90 degrees and making our way back into orbit. The rendezvous with the spaceship or the space plane, whatever you want to call it. At least now I'm, I know I'm never going to build a three-legged lander anymore. <laughs> It just needs four legs for stability and we would have been entirely fine but it wouldn't be as funny i guess well now since i'm one of the more lazy people i didn't really want to try to make a good rendezvous maneuver i just kind of burned a little bit to get ourselves closer to the space uh, plane let's call it that and I'm just gonna do the very, very lazy method of getting to, <laughs> to to the other ship just burning towards target and retrograde and so on until we get close. As you can see, we're basically at the space plane now. Now we can transfer the crew, but since we cannot dock with the plane, we just have to use our EVA packs or jetpacks. And I, for some reason, couldn't get the hatch options to show up. So I'm just trying to attach the kerbals to the ship with the, what you call the magnetic boots. Well, one of the kerbals is just trying to run away. I'm just trying to get them to stick to the craft and time warp a little bit. The sunny side so I can actually see anything. So remember the crew issue I had. This is where I'm actually going to realize what happened when I can't board the ship. I'm like, uh, well, um, I, I can't really use the lander. <laughs> it's just going to burn up in the atmosphere. So just deorbited the lander and figured I'm going to have to do a rescue mission. But first we have to come back to Kerbin. And this is going to be quite wonky with, I think, Bill attached to the wing <laughs> but he seems to be fine during the burn surprisingly and when i time where you can actually hear his little kerbal steps well, normally i would just re-enter the atmosphere all the way from the moon and not really bother but since we have a guest on the wing i can't really do that because it would actually kill bill so we're gonna have to avoid the atmosphere first and slow us down with the engine well, luckily we have that aero spike in the back and tons of fuel and we actually have two more spare engines built into the craft i figured for some maneuvering or something but it wasn't needed but the journey back was a bit weird since i had to jump in and out of time warp so bill wouldn't just drift away let's just slow ourselves down with the great visuals on the screen and I actually expected kind of a bigger burn. And it's actually good we're burning fuel because we can't really be that heavy for the re-entry. Because the craft is very unstable when f almost fully filled with fuel. Alright, we good. Let's get to the sunny side so y'all can see anything. <laughs> and so can I. And we have to get rid of our guest. And this is Bill staying in orbit drifting away from the spacecraft helplessly well not really he has a jetpack <laughs> and you are about to witness my second ever try of landing this craft anywhere i basically just cheated it into orbit before recording and i just wanted to see if it even glides it does surprisingly 
Since we are basically in the atmosphere already, let's retract the solar panels and focus on the glide. It's not gonna be easy, it's also not as hard as it seems. Yes, the craft is a little bit wobbly and I have to do quite a lot of trimming pretty much in every stage down. But it's actually very stable during the re-entry hitting stage when we are still very, very fast. And looks nice as well. <laughs> also, before anybody says anything, this is not meant to be an unpowered stage of the flight. It wasn't meant to be a glide. That's why we have the aerospike engine that's decent in atmosphere and in vacuous space. So we can burn if need be. I bet people more familiarized with atmospheric flight noticed the drag coefficient is quite high for a vehicle like this. So that's the control issues, I guess. And that's why we slow down very, very quickly, especially in the thickest parts of the atmosphere way down. We are about to slow down very, very quickly, pretty soon. Yeah, there we go. And we lost control. We have, I mean, I was actually time warping a bit too much and trying to steer. That was part of the problem. And now we became actually very, very slow, below 200 meters per second. That's way too slow to get to the runway. So we have to perform a little bit of burn, but I got the runway in sight. I think it's due to the wing design <laughs> that the plane is a bit wobbly. I just like the design, that's why I kind of went with it. Went with it. I was actually getting rid of the fuel on our way down. Just keeping the speed quite high and as you probably noticed we went all the way down to 80 meters per second which is basically landing speed for this craft i figured and the more fuel we burn the easier it is to actually fly it and the faster it is the easier it is to fly but at the same time when i tested this craft just launching from the runway it could barely get to mach 1 and it wouldn't go any faster i'm guessing you to drag or not enough engine power or probably both combined but either way we're about to touch down and that's gonna conclude the first part of the mission it actually lands really really nicely and we didn't miss the runway foreshadowing <laughs> so let's deploy the drog shoot the arrow brakes and wait for the plane to slow and don't forget we actually have uh, bill still in orbit but Jeb and Bob don't seem to care. But Jeb was kind enough. He hopped back in, was launched on top of a rocket. And since we know and you know, we can actually go to space. Uh, I decided to just skip the launch part. Just get straight to the rescue mission. So the video isn't too long. It probably would have taken another 10 or even 15 minutes with the launch, the synchronization, all that jazz. And instead you get to watch me uh, rescue Bill just by boring towards him and retrograde and so on. So let's transfer, uh, transfer, <laughs> let's get Bill on board so we can get him home finally. <laughs> Bill has been through enough and let's get him home and give him a cheeseburger and a beer or honestly any other snacks. Well, we are apparently upside down this time over the deserty area of Carbon, perform the, the orbit burn and we can head back down with approximately 70% of fuel left on board, even 75%. And that is not gonna be the best for our re-entry Ability, as you can probably see currently on screen. Yeah, we just spun out almost instantly when hitting thicker parts. So that was a cheeky F9 there. I just decided to pretty much not touch any controls. Just keep it pointed at prone grade and hope for the best at this point. I know since we are in the re-entry hitting phase, I'm, I know it's going to be somewhat stable. <laughs> We are currently way too heavy to correctly land, so I'm not even aiming for the runway. And I guess we're just gonna spawn out again <laughs> and lose control entirely. And now the plane just wobbles. It looks quite funny 
especially in five times speed. So let's just use up the fuel so we are actually light and we can be stable on the approach and the landing. I'm just gonna do a little bit half circle around kinda like the space shuttle did but this one is powered and nothing like the space shuttle. <laughs> I know the approach is completely off. The AOA is also off. Uh, the the roll on this craft is very hard to control. Uh, I'm gonna say it's due to the wings. It's definitely due to the wings. We got ourselves aligned with the left runway. It's 27L, I think. And the gear is down. I was hoping I'm gonna make it to the runway, but we were short of runway, of course. We ended up on the tarmac at last, so I'm gonna count that as a win, as a good landing. And we got Bill home. And thank you for watching and see you in the next KSP video.